G'day guys. Hey guys, Cam McClellan. Hal Lewison. Welcome to today's Wealth Word. Work out of the day. We're going to talk today about low cost to hold. So we're still into finding the property investment deal of a lifetime. We've got the market, we've got the area. That's right. We've got the property. We've dealt into property, we've talked about buying under the median house price. The next thing I look for is um, holding as much asset as possible for as little man out of my back pocket. Um, as we were building our portfolios, um, both were pretty young at the time and uh, we wanted to enjoy life, that was a fact. So I wanted us to hold a portfolio and build a portfolio and get awesome growth, but still have it cost me very little out of my back pocket. So we're gonna to talk today about low cost to hold. Yeah, you, people often talk to you about blue chip. I said blue chip, blue chip, blue chip. You know, buy if you're Melbourne, buy in Hawthorne, buy in Turak, buy in South Yarra, buy blue chip property. Um, yes, blue chip property is good, it's a good idea, but you break it back down to hold as much property as you can. Um, well, blue chip property may not be the right option for you to do that. And yeah, we'll explain why to you today. Yeah, I'll give you an example. Um, Felicity and I, uh, when, I, when I met Felicity, um, we built a serious portfolio of property over the uh, first five years. We went pretty hard building our portfolio. Um, but um, Felicity had lived in the same area of Melbourne for basically her entire life. So she wanted to, before we sort of settled down and uh, moved into our, the similar area, she you wanted to take go, the girl out of scores me. There you go, there you go. I think school's really good. So we went and uh, I'd lived in Elwood previously, which is a river, um, a beachside suburb in Melbourne. And I said to her, why don't we go and live for a year down in Elwood? Um, what we did at that point in time was we went and started looking at, you know, the, the Art Deco, um, you know, double story apartments, so four on a block and that sort of thing, because we built a reasonable portfolio of units and townhouses at that stage. Um, decided not to purchase it. Could have quite easily afforded to buy um, yeah, this, this property in Elwood, but instead I took the same amount of money and it came down to the cost to hold. So I'll give you a quick example of why I did. Um, so I had, uh, at that point in time, so we used, we used $300. So I've got spare in my cash flow, um, week to week, an additional $300. I could have used that entire amount for the holding costs of this Elwood apartment which would have cost me about 550k. But instead what I did, I went out and I purchased at the time, I used the example of two, but it was actually three at the time. Um, three $400,000 properties. Now, these were in you know, medium density, middle to outer ring, um, metropolitan Melbourne. But really what I've done there is I've got You can see there, for the same money out of my back pocket, I'm holding 1.2 million worth of asset, as opposed to 550. As I said, let's say blue chip, and we've got plenty of data to, to say otherwise, but let's say blue chip rises at 1% faster on per annum. 1% more on 550K is not gonna make up for the huge shortfall you've got on your asset holdings of 1.2 million. These properties are still in good growth areas and I've still got them today. So what happens guys in 10 years in this example? Property, as we talked about, 8.7%, property doubles every 10 years to use a rule of thumb. Call it 10% if you want. That's a two. 2.4. Too bad two. I think it looks worse now. So this is worth 2.4 million in 10 years. This is worth 1.1 million in 10 years. The camp's decision there, guys, which may have been a stroke of luck at the time, it wasn't, but <laughs> let's say it was a stroke of luck. He is $1.3 million better off because he went and bought three properties and not one in a blue chip area. It would have been cool to say to my mates, I just bought this you know, Art Deco apartment in Elwood. It's a blue chip area and it's near the beach, that sort of thing, but hey, I'll take the three crap properties and make more money over the long term and now I can go out and purchase any property I want. So it's another topic that we're talking about how to choose the right property today, but another topic there is, and we talk to people about it, go and rent where you want to live yeah. and go and invest where it makes sense to invest. So as Cam said, he, he wanted to buy in Elwood, chose not to, he rented in Elwood, he bought three properties where he used to live, mm. um, which was a smart decision, he's much better off. Yeah, um, I don't know if you've got time, at, um, one of our mates said, um, I've got 300 grand, I want commercial property, um, do you want to run through that scenario, if you've got uh, two sex one? Yeah, so I got a call last week, and they said, um, I've got a business, they've got a very good business, a consulting business, they said, I'm thinking with my 300 grand, I might go and buy myself an office building worth 800,000, the bank will lend them, you know, sort of 70% on the purchase. He said, I'm paying rent anyway, I'll just pay rent to myself. Well, the way to look at it, exactly this example here is go, what can you hold with your $300,000? So yes, you could pay a 30% deposit and buy one office, your own money, 
Or you could borrow 90% and go and buy three, probably four investment properties. Maybe five, six. That's right. So difference is that he's going to pay rent anyway, pay to himself, pay to them. It's about investing or holding as much property as you can for your money. Mm. Uh, and then in the long run, letting compound growth take care of it for you. So low cost to hold guys. The, the least you can put out of your back pocket, the best, which is um, another reason we purchase new properties ourselves now, because um, of depreciation, those sort of things, but we'll go into that later. So, happy worth Have a good day.